is a pleasure to have you two here, the two finest members of our workforce. What you're seeing is a prototype, Gen X85. It's our company's attempt to create a machine that powered by our XV processors can manipulate time. Essentially our version of a time machine. Unfortunately, in the initial production phase, we've encountered a problem. Instead of manipulating time the way we intended, towards the future, it pushes us forwards and backwards in repetitive cycles, like a loop. We cannot present this to the committee for observation until this problem is fixed. This is where you come in. Why us? Who programmed the device? Why shouldn't they be responsible to clear up their mess? If it were only that simple. Our main code programmer working on the prototype, Dean. He was a very good man. We discovered so much because of him. He realised the only way to change the programming was to turn the device on. When it was turned on, after a predetermined time, Dean experienced massive headaches and lapses in his memory. This continued for hours, with his health declining. Before he knew it, he... He what? He lost himself. What? If the one who made it couldn't cope with the temporal shifts induced by the prototype, how are we supposed to work in that environment, let alone change the frameworks around it? As I was about to tell you before you rudely interrupted me, this is where you come in. We'll be having you two situated in our testing facility, designed to hold and contain temporal shifts and the rapid acceleration of particles forwarding and reversing entropies, with magnets embedded in the walls of the room made from the same material that the Large Hadron Collider is made from. This will ensure that the time manipulation doesn't in any way change the physical reality in front of you and keeps the physical dimension around you intact. You'll receive food and other important items through a male slot-sized opening in the door of the facility, so that no one comes into contact with the accelerating particles. That would be fatal for everyone involved. Dean's research helped us to conclude the variables needed in order to bypass and avoid the temporal shifts causing serious damage to our brain receptors. This is one of the tools, a countdown timer designed to be compatible and run in tandem with the strength of your brain receptors, timing and warning of the impending arrival of the shift. The clocks and no windows, huh? <laughs> well, I don't particularly mind this view. The natural progression of time does not apply to us, remember. We cannot be distracted by the sunrise or the sunset. We run our own time. The only way to bypass a temporal shift and reset is by being subconscious, which, loosely put, be in a state of sleep. All this timer device does is help you schedule your sleep so that you leave ample time and are asleep at the precise moment that the interval resets. Once the interval resets and a new iteration begins, you'll be made to wake up and continue with your programming before the next interval. One of you will work and the other will sleep and vice versa. What? What happens if we don't succeed? We'll pull you out as soon as possible. Whenever we feel like it's too much, we'll externally switch off the prototype and extract you out of the room. Your memories and recollection of the experience might be fuzzy, but we'll put you through a rehabilitation program designed to help you slowly remember everything. Shouldn't we get an internal switch control of the prototype? No. To gather data and observe your situation, Gen X85 must be switched on the moment you enter the room. It's up to you to decide whether you'd like to continue or not. This is a high risk and high reward opportunity. You will be paid handsomely, and your families will be taken care of. There's always someone available to fill a role. Always. Okay there, buddy. Easy, easy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Your name? Aaron Ellsworth. Age? 24. Where are we? Testing facility room T1204. Briefing code. Hey, Rob, I, I'm okay. <laughs> Look, I, I know where I am and what I have to do. I know, mate. I know. But we've got to follow standard awareness protocol. VM80987A81. Good. <laughs> You're all set to go. Name? Robert. Robert. Robert Oswald. Okay. And age? 26. 26. Any progress? <sighs> Nothing sticks. It's the interval shift that keeps inducing a glitch which keeps restoring the previous programming. It's a bummer that we have to start from square one every single time. <laughs> yeah, well. That's just the way it is. No, no, no. I'll get the chair. I've been stuck in this box with you for God knows how long, and without fail, you forget me, but you don't forget her, you bastard. Rob, do you see colours when you close your eyes? You mean those swirly flashes of lights that you see? Yeah, sometimes. I probably fall asleep before I can really observe them. You see, I can. Fun fact about me, I can sing with my eyes open. Wait, really? In fact, I can barely see you amidst those colours. Were you born with this thing? No. Well, Maybe. Uh, I don't really know anymore. Aaron, we are going to look back and laugh at this predicament, OK? We're going to get through it. Anyway, it's time to troubleshoot. Yeah, yeah. Name? Aaron. Hey, hey, 
buddy. You need to sleep, all right? There's still plenty of time to work. There's something wrong. Do I not have enough time to sleep? No, no. Yes, yes, you do. Oh. Hey, hey, man. You don't trust me. You need to sleep. It's going to be all right. Name? John Marshall. Dennis Hodge. Briefing code? VM8098788181. Welcome to the team. Do you remember? <laughs> 